Okay, so you've been asked for a wall tie survey and believe it or not, over the last 30 odd years, I've had a lot of clients ask me, well, what is a wall tie? And you may not know because it's not something you'll come across in your day to day life. So we thought we'd just set something up for you to give you an idea of what the survey is looking for when it comes to do a wall tie survey on your property. Um, we'll be using various bits of equipment to look at them of course I've set some out here now the truth is we haven't got x-ray eyes and we don't want to damage the house so normally we would use a boroscope which is one of these things there are many different types which involves a simple hole through the wall into the cavity and we can put this little thing in as you can see it shines away there and have a look and we can even take photographs of the ties through that what are we looking for well I've laid out a selection of ties here and it's no coincidence, there's about nine or ten ties here because there are nine levels of corrosion that we tend to look at. And that comes from the guidance we get via the building research establishment. Gone are the days when the surveyor just decides whether your wall ties are rusty. You don't have to worry about that. It's not subjective in the way it used to be because there's a document that we can use, BRE 329 and BRE 401, and they tell us how corroded is corroded, basically. So let's have a look at the sort of corrosion we might find when we're doing a survey. The good news is, in many cases when we carry out a survey, there's virtually no corrosion. So we can't prejudge it. And in fact, on the same street, on the same estate, you may have two identical houses and we can survey those and find that one has corroded wall ties and the other doesn't. Because there are lots of factors involved. So let's have a look at some. Here's a stainless steel tie. And if you live in a brand new house, this is what you'll be looking at. Stainless steel wall ties, basically they're going to last forever, don't worry about it. Galvanised wall ties were used in the last century, all the way up to 2000 in fact, and they do have a finite life. And they'll range in types, there are wire ties like this, there are fishtail ties which are also very common, um, ties with a U-bend in the middle, and these span the cavity and basically the outer leaf of your wall is borrowing some of the strength and rigidity of the inner leaf, which is the load-bearing leaf. Corrosion is inevitable with galvanised ties, but it takes decades. You very rarely see houses with corroded ties within 20 or 30 years. So what have we got? Stages of corrosion are outlined in BRE Digest 401, and we look at the tie and compare what we see with what's described in the digest. So in this case, very slight corrosion, a little bit of white oxide. And what white oxide is, is basically the zinc corroding. Okay, so it's zinc oxide basically. But it's not ferric oxide, it's not red rust. So all this is telling us is that the tie is beginning to corrode. It'll be years before we need to do anything about that. The next stage is this. And what we can see here is the white corrosion has given way to some surface corrosion. It is only on the surface. We've got bright steel there and no evidence of loss of section. Now, the problem here though is we're starting to see some red rusting. And anyone who's owned an old car will know that you can polish it every week and it's got no rust on it. And then after you see a bit of rust, suddenly it starts mounting up very quickly because rust begets more rust. That's just a fact of life. So once you get red rusting, you start having to plan really to replace the wall ties. The next stage, we've got loss of section. The tie is beginning to form a layer of ferric oxide on its surface and we call this lamination. In effect, the tie is growing fatter because the rust takes up more space than the original metal. That's a problem because they're encapsulated in the mortar bed very firmly with a lot of weight of brick on top. And the chemical reaction of that rusting will eventually break that bond so rather than the wall acting as a nice big homogeneous panel, it's now acting as horizontal strips because at every layer of wall ties there's a minute crack which you can barely see at first. Difficulty is that once you've got that cracking, water will get in and it's drawn in by capillary action. It's sucked into the wall every time the rain falls. And typically you'll get a tie like this where it's still in pretty good condition. There's a bit of white oxide on the drip feature there in the middle in the cavity but the external face is now completely unprotected. If you look carefully, you'll see it's actually thinner, it's lost some section. Now, when it was in the wall, this will have had a big fat layer of lamination on it. And probably this house had some horizontal cracking visible from the ground. Now you might say, well, I can't bend that. It's rock hard. But the problem is the bond is now compromised because the wall in effect is built 
onto this layer, this dirty tea bag, if you like, of rusting material. And in high winds, we have collapses where the outer leaf gets sucked off there and it takes all the rubbish with it and it leaves behind something like this. And you think, well, wow, I could tow a car with that, but the wall still collapsed. Not all ties are galvanized. Often, especially with pre-war properties, the dipped in black paint, some people call it black Japan. Um, it comes in various shapes and sizes and thicknesses. And it's got a finite life as well, of course. Paint peels off. If you paint your gate with hammerite or whatever, you'll find sometimes it'll peel off, you know, after a few years. And that's what's happening there. It's inevitable that this will continue at that stage. And this is why, as surveyors, we have to protect our clients against the consequences of wall tie failure. We have a duty of care, both to vendors and purchasers. So we'll describe the stage of corrosion. We'll tell you if it can be monitored or if it needs dealing with now. Because the end result is this. Um, this is aggravated by the presence of black ash mortar. Uh, black ash mortar was a common mortar used um, using basically aggregates left over from industry. And these aggregates contain a lot of sulfur, which makes it slightly acidic rather than alkaline. And as a result, it strips off the protection very quickly. And this is what you get, a complete failure. So I hope that's given you some idea of what we're looking for when we actually look at your wall ties. This video is about the corrosion, it's not about the solutions. Don't panic at this stage. We'll tell you exactly what's wrong or hopefully what's not wrong. And that's the case.